Morena, everybody. Um, I'm Jennifer Taylor Moore, and this is Tim Jones, and we're both regional ambassadors for the National Digital Forum. And today, we just want to give you an overview of how NDF has been working in the regions. So each year, ambassadors are appointed by NDF to represent the organisation in the regions. And these ambassadors are responsible for the dissemination of information regarding um, NDF, as well as organising these forums and events to support the main conference. These forums are funded by NDF and they're held prior to the main conference in Wellington. And they usually take the format of an unconference, which is where participants decide on the day what they wish to discuss at the event, they submit these topics, which are then grouped into themes and then discussed in detail. With a shorter travel time and no accommodation costs required, these regional forums are easier for those with smaller budgets to access. And this enables the NDF to provide support to smaller sites that wouldn't normally be able to attend the main event in Wellington. It also provides a less intimidating format and more easily encourages active participation from attendees. The target audience is incredibly diverse, from large, medium and small institutions, from the glam sector, to iwi, businesses and school archives, as well as volunteer-run organisations. Some examples of the smaller sites who have attended recent events include the Methbin Museum, the Whanganui Collegiate School, volunteer archivists at Putuki Marae, Te Atawhai o Te Au, the Independent Māori Research Institute for Environment and Health, as well as volunteers from historical societies such as the Ellesmere Historical Society and the Foxton Historical Society. Some of the positive outcomes of these forums include the strengthening and fostering of networks within each region, connecting up sites with available resources such as nat National Services Te Paerangi, and also providing reassurance that other sites are facing similar challenges or addressing like issues, and these lessen the feeling of isolation for the smaller regional sites. Further opportunities exist for scheduling by the Ambassador of Skillshare events, as well as ongoing meetings to review material from the online archive of previous NDF conferences. A particular challenge for the ambassadors is to get the word out about these regional events to those who will most benefit. We rely on previous invitation lists and also on GLAM sector directories such as the Museums Aotearoa directory. But because the audience is so diverse, it is sometimes difficult to know how to make contact with the smaller sites. Information about these regional events are posted on the NDF website and also promoted in various glam sector newsletters such as Museums Aotearoa, as well as being promoted on social media. I just thought I'd outline for you some of the interesting and challenging topics that have been raised at recent forums. And these include a major issue which there is no specific answer for, the future proofing of digital file formats. We have discussed how we can ensure that these digital files remain active, accessible and stable into the future. Discussions have been held around how we can set up a framework or a procedure to manage this process. What file formats are going to be the most versatile with the most longevity? How can we manage and update obsolete file formats? And how can we best store and back up these files? We've also discussed and sort of tried to promote the importance of ensuring regular and recoverable backups are maintained, particularly at smaller sites that have no IT support or infrastructure. There's been a lot of uncertainty expressed at forums regarding the complexity of copyright, as well as how to use Creative Commons licenses. And this is also particularly challenging for those sites that don't have an established protocol in place. Uh, we've discussed the sharing of data with aggregate sites such as Digital NZ, NZ Museums and eHive to name a few. And in particular the image permissions from subjects contained in images on these sites which include but are not limited to iwi subjects. And the, the difference between having 
permission for your own local site versus sharing these images with these aggregate sites, such as at the National Library and Digital NZ. Another hot topic is photography of collections. Um, people are seeking advice about what image file formats and sizes are best for storage and use. How do you manage access to these files and how do you protect the raw and master files as well? So following these events, um, the ambassadors report back to the NDF board regarding these issues and challenges. And now I'm going to hand over to Tim who will discuss some of the outcomes from the regional forums in more detail. Thank you, Jennifer. It's kia ora tota. My name is uh, Tim Jones, as has already been said. Um, so I was going to talk about uh, some of the uh, outcomes, as uh, has been said. Uh, this year, a group of Canterbury Regional Forum attendees got together a few months after the Regional Forum to talk about various problems and projects connected with name authority. This issue had specifically arisen at our regional forum in June and seemed to justify more exploration than was, uh, than was possible on the day. Uh, Rowan Payne, who's here somewhere, from Digital New Zealand, and Michael Lascarides from the National Library joined this group uh, because we talked about it and they heard about it and they wanted to be there too. Um, the University of Canterbury's project, Understanding Place, is currently wrestling with naming places with no street names in Canterbury's cleared red zone. And Christchurch City Library's manually created index of street name origins is a candidate for conversion into some kind of database with maps or external links. Personal name authority issues are bubbling under thanks to projects such as the Fine New Zealand Artists website, fresh research into early Canterbury photographers, and the Canterbury Museum's MacDonald biography project. So this was an agenda-free get-together, but was extremely useful and allowed different project solutions to comparable problems to be explored in detail. Uh, it would not have happened without the regional forum. That's a simple fact. So a report on each regional forum, as Jennifer has already said, is written and topics and issues from forums are fed back to the NDF board and they provide a framework for planning future programs for this very conference. Uh, Joanna, the, who is the board's professional development portfolio lead, reports that NDF board pay close attention to the regional report, so that's good to know. And I quote her, they were a particular highlight of last year's AGM. That may tell you something about what else was on the agenda, but uh, <laughs> they were a highlight. So, finally, what of the, f what of the future? Um, feedback on regional forums that we seek and we receive is extremely positive, uh, but that's no reason to suppose the forums couldn't be better still. Uh, people generally love coming to the forums. Uh, one comment that is repeatedly made is that although the network and the networking and the freedom to think about any idea of common concern is very useful and very liberating, uh, the next step, which is delivering or organizing or facilitating actual skills training, uh, is often missing. Uh, NDF will assist with actual training if a need and a trainer can be identified, and Jennifer mentioned that. And some regional forums do run as de facto training sessions. But this raises the question then of what NDF's role really is here. Is NDF a training provider? Could it be? Should it be? Uh, how, many, how would ambassadors organize this? Uh, what would the business model for this be? Um, or is training something that individual institutions and individuals have to organize and therefore pay for themselves? I think it's fair to say that the smaller institutions often come to NDF Regional Forum in my experience, with fairly high expectations of a training outcome which they don't receive. Another point raised in regional forum feedback and not unconnected to the training question is how NDF's regional activities, the forums, uh, relate to other national bodies' regional activities such as uh, MA's regional hui, uh, their EMP activities, Lianza's communities, the National Services to Pairangi's various programs, and probably other sector-specific uh, programs and projects that I'm not even familiar with. Now, perhaps these activities from these various organizations do all operate perfectly well and independently, but 
you have to think there may be a risk that there's a, a duplication of effort or that we're chasing the same speakers or the same venues to achieve uh, very similar things and cover the very similar territory. As well as national bodies operating regionally, there are, of course, plenty of formal and informal lo local groupings and personal connections between neighbouring institutions, which per work perfectly well without any national coordination. Though these connections may certainly be strengthened by events such as uh, the regional forums. As one attendee said at our most recent event in Christchurch, this forum is worth a thousand emails. We might also consider the unconference bar camp style event. Uh, we might consider whether that's still the most useful way of, of, of proceeding. It requires very little organization in advance, but it's high risk as it depends on the participants being energized and uh, on the day, which you can't rely on. My impression is that it's extremely useful once or twice, but does not necessarily bear repeating, especially with the same participants. Finally, we know that there are parts of the country which the networking opportunities of a regional forum have not reached. We in Canterbury know that the west coast of the South Island is, is one of those. We're delighted when small clubs, societies, churches, schools, community groups come along to a regional forum, but this always raises the question of what other cultural uh, organisations, social groups, with collections and digitisation uh, issues uh, um, may be absent. So we've spent 15 minutes uh, showcasing NDF's regional forums and speculating on what, if anything, could be improved. What I think is really needed, though, is a bit more research. There exists plenty of feedback and reportage on many years of forums and some more formal analysis uh, than has been possible here uh, would be very useful. Questions that such research might try to answer could be, are there any trends or patterns have topics uh, come and gone over time? Are there particular training needs that are simply and repeatedly not met? Or have these in fact declined over time? Do the same people come each year? Do participants get regional forumed out? Is networking such a valuable end in itself that it alone should be the focus of regional forums? Is the unconference the best way of facilitating such networking? If you have any thoughts on any of this, you should talk to me or to Jennifer or uh, to your regional ambassador or to somebody on the NDF board. You could do any of those things, but probably the most useful thing you could possibly do is come, to, is come to the AGM, which is being held tomorrow morning because you may or may not know that NDF itself is doing a bit of strategic planning. And uh, this uh, reflection on its regional activities seems to me an extremely uh, logical part of that more uh, global uh, uh, reflection on what NDF should and shouldn't do in the future. So uh, there we are, 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. Somewhere in this building is the place to uh, come and tell us what you think. Thank you very much. <laughs>